Robin Hood is known the world over as one of England's best-loved heroes. His legend has been adapted for the screen both big and small at least once in every decade, and often multiple times since the silent era. Yet most people know relatively little about the actual story and historical context, and what they do know it's probably misinformation. To set the record straight and to explore some interesting details, here are 10 little-known facts about the mythos. Number 10. We don't know who he was, or if he even existed. The real Robin Hood is thought to have been one Robert Hood, an outlaw operating in the north of England between the 12th and 14th centuries. The only trouble is there are far too many to choose from, especially when you factor in the variant spellings like Hod, Hood, Huddle, De Hudder, etc. There was a fugitive by the name of Robert Hobber Hod Hod, living in Yorkshire, for example, around the year 1255, and another imprisoned in Rockingham circa 1354 for trespass of Vert and Venison, i.e. straying into royal hunting grounds. Another Robert de Hodder was recorded in 1199 as a deserter from Henry II. Any one of these and many others could have been the real Robin Hood, or indeed none of them, or even all of them could have been him. Some say that the name was merely a nom de guerre, a nickname assumed by criminals in general in their efforts to escape the law, in this case derived from the word robber and the hood that they wore. If true, this doesn't mean Robin Hood was a myth, just that he was more than one person, and that might explain how he became so widely renowned. Number 9. He didn't have anything to do with the Crusades Many adaptations, including the upcoming 2018 movie, associate Robin Hood with the Crusades to the Holy Land. In the 1980s TV series Robin of Sherwood, as well as the more recent Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, there's actually a Muslim Saracen warrior among the Merry Men. But the Crusades context wasn't added to the Robin Hood mythos until Sir Walter Scott wrote Ivanhoe in the 19th century. In fact, Robin Hood doesn't even appear to have lived during the reign of Richard the Lion, half the Crusading King. Certainly, the earliest ballads have nothing to do with all of that. Robin Hood and the Monk and Robin Hood and the Potter, for example, were just about duping the Sheriff of Nottingham. In the latter, Robin Hood swaps clothes with the Potter and goes to sell pots in the city, where he ends up winning an archery contest against the Sheriff's men. When asked if he knows Robin Hood, the hero leads the Sheriff to his camp, humiliates him, and steals his shoes before sending him home barefoot. Number 8. Friar Tuck came along later. Of all the Merry Men, Friar Tuck is undoubtedly the most distinctive. However, he wasn't mentioned in the earliest ballads. Along with Maid Marian, Friar Tuck was introduced to the Robin Hood mythos via traditional May Festival dramatizations as a stock character for Morris dancers. His name probably refers to his shortened, tucked-up robe, no doubt useful for dancing and also for fighting. Interestingly, evidence suggests that he was real. Two raw writs in 1417 called for the arrest of one Frere Tuck, an outlaw later revealed in a 1429 letter to be Robert Stafford, chaplain of Linfield in Sussex. There's evidence that Little John may have been real too, although it comes from a century earlier. There was a Little John poaching deer in Yorkshire in 1323, for example, and a John de Little in 1318, who was a part of a band of raiders. Famously, a giant of a man, the ironically named Little John, became Robin Hood's chief lieutenant after beating the hero in a duel. Number 7. Much the Miller's Son is Much Ignored The lesser-known Merry Men, at least the ones with names, are Will Scarlet, Alan Dale, and Much the Miller's Son. Will Scarlet was originally a background character in the earlier ballads and was called Will Scathlock. This is from the Middle English scathan, meaning to shave, and lock, meaning hair, in other words, referring to a skinhead. Alan Dale, meanwhile, wasn't present in the earliest ballads at all. He was first mentioned in a 17th century tale in which Robin Hood helps him win back a lover from a wealthy older man. Hence, the character is frequently depicted as a romantic and a lover of music, a counterbalance to the masculinity of the others, and was played by Bing Crosby in the musical Robin and the Seven Hoods from 1964. The most prominent of the Merry Men in the ballads is Much the Miller's Son, yet he's often left out of adaptations, including Disney's Robin Hood from 1973 and Ridley Scott's 2010 blockbuster. Maybe this is because he's also the least sympathetic character. In the ballad Robin Hood and the Monk, for instance, he's depicted as a cold-blooded killer who apparently thinks nothing of killing a little boy. Another reason for leaving him out of modern adaptations may be that, unlike the other Merry Men, who each have some defining visual trait or prop, Little John's great size, Friar Tuck's robe, Will Scarlet's red clothes, Anna Dale's harp, and Maid Marian's gender. All we really know about much 
is that he was the son of a miller. He doesn't even have his own origin story. That said, his name is understood to have been a nickname referring to his having much wealth, thanks to his father's profession. Number 6. The 2018 movie is one of many upcoming releases. Otto Bathurst's 2018 movie, Robin Hood, may be the 77th adaptation of the tale, at least going by a rather incomplete list we could find online, but it's just one of many upcoming reboots. Sony wants to launch a new franchise with their medieval superhero movie, Robin Hood, previously titled simply Hood because, well, apparently that's edgy. Disney also planned to use the Pirates of the Caribbean template in producing a Robin Hood of their own. Warner Brothers, meanwhile, are reportedly working on their own Robin Hood movie too, also called Hood and helmed by Lily. Lily and Lana Wachowski, though production seems to have stalled on that one. DreamWorks announced Merry Men more than five years ago, seemingly in response to the popularity of Jack the Giant Slayer and Oz the Great and Powerful, while Sony's Marion will star Margot Robbie as the love interest in the wake of Robin Hood's death. There's also a Robin Hood 2058 in the works about a dystopian future London and a band of activist thieves, as well as at least two TV series, Nottingham and The Outlaw Chronicles. Number 5. There's still a Sheriff of Nottingham In another early ballad, Robin Hood and Guy of Gisborne, Robin finally kills the Sheriff. Following a prophetic dream of his own capture, the hero meets Sir Guy of Gisborne, who claims to be hunting the outlaw but doesn't know what he looks like. After fighting and killing Sir Guy, Robin disguises himself in his clothes, cuts off his head, mutilates his face, and delivers it to the Sheriff of Nottingham, declaring it to be the head of Robin Hood. Refusing the reward, however, he demands to fight the imprisoned Little John instead, and when his accomplice is brought out, the two of them kill the sheriff together. But the sheriff, well, he got the last laugh. It being an official role in the city of Nottingham, there continues to be a sheriff to this very day. And at the time of making this video, the sheriff, well, she's actually a woman. Her role, which lasts for a year, is mostly ceremonial, focused primarily on tourism-related events and openings, as opposed to, you know, chasing down criminals. But one of her predecessors, Leon Unser, took it a little more seriously. He dressed in a black gown with a gold chain, even for unphotographed interviews with print journalists, and when Nottingham set up an urban beach in the city centre, he went along to kick over kids' sandcastles. As he sees it, having always played the baddie in school plays, he may have been born for the role. One of his first acts as sheriff was to grant himself a throne in Nottingham Castle, where he held court while carrying out his duties. He also set up the Sheriff's Commission to expand his powers from a civil position to more of an ambassadorial role. This allowed him to extract more money from tourists, although it should be noted this was on an entirely voluntary basis and was not used for himself, but rather for the purpose of city improvement. Number 4. Robin Hood's Grave is Hidden from the Public According to the earliest ballads, perhaps the most reliable sources we have, Robin Hood was killed by his cousin, the Prioress of Kirklees. Under the pretext of a bloodletting, a common medical treatment back then, she slashed open one of his veins and allowed him to bleed half to death before her accomplice, Sir Roger of Doncaster, aka Red Roger, finished him off with a sword, though not before Robin dealt a mortal wound in return. As he lay dying, Robin is said to have fired an arrow into the woods and asked Little John to bury him where it landed. Only the gatehouse of the Priory of Kirkley still stands today, but the woodland nearby is home to Robin Hood's grave. Ironically, however, you have to trespass across a wealthy landowner's estates, in other words, becoming an outlaw yourself, just to pay respects to the hero. Unlike most British heritage sites, there are no signposts or public footpaths leading to it. Nowadays, the allegedly haunted site its in ruin, strewn with broken columns and stone, but it still does look grand and mysterious. If anything, the moss that covers the monument, vibrant green in the light that gets through the trees, only adds to the ancient mystique evoking images of Robin Hood himself. It's thought to be a replacement of a much earlier monument that got chipped away to nothing by people who thought that it cured toothache. While it's generally thought to be a folly, since ground-penetrating radar tests revealed no indication of a burial, let alone the presence of bones, some think his remains lay somewhere undiscovered in the woodlands. Unfortunately, there are now controversial plans to build over the area and develop it as an industrial space. Number 3. Sherwood Forest is threatened by fracking Even in 1609, centuries after Robin Hood's earliest mention, Sherwood Forest was more than 20 miles long and 8 miles wide, occupying roughly 100,000 acres of Nottinghamshire. It wasn't all woodland, though. Forest was merely a legal designation for an area set aside for the exclusive hunting rights of the king. Sherwood would have comprised open meadows and other terrain in addition to ancient woodland. 
And ancient it was. According to pollen records, there has been dense forestry in the area for at least 10,000 years, and many trees there today are several centuries old. The major oak tree, for example, where Robin Hood and his men had their camp, is roughly 1,000 years old and is the biggest in all of Britain, with a girth of 10 meters and a 28-meter spread. Recently, the fracking company INEOS has been given permission by the British government to carry out seismic surveys in the area, allowing them to detonate explosive charges underground. They assured the public that some of the most ecologically sensitive parts of Sherwood Forest would be left untouched, but as it turns out, well, they were lying. Their work not only threatens wildlife in the area, and like all fracking, affects people further afield, but it could also pose a significant threat to the ancient major oak tree itself. Number 2. Robin Hood wasn't a revolutionary communist. Everybody knows Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor as a kind of proto-communist hero. Indeed, he was co-opted by the Soviets for several 1970s and 80s propaganda films. This is a very common interpretation of the character. According to the director of the 2008 movie Robin Hood, Otto Bathurst, it makes him rather more believable. However, there is not a great deal in the original ballads to suggest that he was a uh, revolutionary at all. While they focused on social issues and classes, as opposed to dragons and magic, they gave no suggestion that Robin Hood sought to overturn the social system and redistribute wealth to the poor. Rather, he fought to rid the existing social system of corruption, of the king's overtaxation and the sheriff's rampant extortion. It's a subtle distinction, but it's a really essential one to make, especially as Hollywood gears up to politicize the tale even further with plenty of new adaptations. It's the difference between between seeing Robin Hood as economically liberal or economically conservative, as someone who wanted to punish the wealthy simply because they were wealthy with his own kind of tax on the rich, or as a more conservative figure who stood for libertarian ideals and an end to oppressive taxation. Number 1. Maid Marian may have been black Before white Irish actress Eve Hewson was cast in the role of Maid Marian for Robin Hood in 2018, black actress Gugu Mbatha Raw was in the running. And people didn't like this one bit, seeing it as politically correct revisionism. But it's not nearly as anachronistic as it seems. Medieval Europe was far from culturally isolated. In fact, people of color have been living in Britain since at least the times of the Romans. And they weren't all traders and they weren't all slaves. King James IV of Scotland had numerous black courtiers who, judging by their gifts of slippers, silks, and pure gold, clearly were not slaves or servants. The remains of noble women of African descent were also unearthed in York, and tournaments were frequently held to win the honor of a so-called black maiden or lady. Racism may not even have existed in Britain until it was used to justify colonialism, the enslavement and genocide of dark-skinned natives overseas at the time of the British Empire. Not only does this mean Maid Marian could have been black, but evidence suggests that indeed she was. There's an etymological link, for instance, between her name, sometimes given as Murian or Moorish one, and the traditional English Morris dancing or Moorish dancing in which participants sometimes wore blackface. Maid Marian actually appears to have originated as a stock character in these dances alongside Friar Tuck. And Sir Morian, the Black Knight of Arthurian legend and the Black Saint Maurice, may have related derivations. In other words, we don't know that Maid Marian was black, but the evidence suggests that indeed she was. It's a shame the 2018 movie actually missed that opportunity to challenge misconceptions. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, as always, do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And if you want something else to watch right now, check out those on the screen now or one a video from my other channel. It's called Biographics, Biographies of Notable People from History. So click on that and check it out. And as always, thank you for watching.